Hi everyone and welcome back to my channel. I hope you're all doing well and having a fantastic week. Today I'm joined by Baby Olive who's got a lovely treat for and I'm going to show you what's in our bird food cupboard for 2023. Now I mentioned in recent videos would you guys like to see this because I've made videos like this before in the past and you guys did so I decided to make it today. Now a couple of points um this isn't necessarily everything we have but it's mostly kind of everything because it's all stored in the kitchen. I am out of stock of a few things which I mention as I go along um, but uh, this is the majority of what we usually have in the house currently uh, in our bird food cupboard so I hope you enjoy. So this is the kind of bird food prep area I mean one day I would love to have like my own sort of bird food prep kitchen or something but you know not yet. <laughs> um, but you never know, never say never. Um, so up here at the very top we've got um, our bird first aid kit uh, on the right hand side. I've shown that in videos before. Um, I'll leave a link for that now if you want to see what's in there. Got um, extra kind of sprouting bits and pieces and kind of first aid supplements. I've got a human first aid kit because I'm always in there because I'm really clumsy. And then we've got various bits and pieces that are not in our typical dry mix i kind of mentioned that recently in our dry mix video that there are things that we don't put in the dry mix for various reasons um we've also got some spoons measuring things and some paper cake cases which is what we use for some enrichments i like to keep them there um easy to access and then down here we've got a variety of different things i'm going to show you each thing individually um, that we use on a regular basis, things that I've just bought as well, so we ran out. Um, and then I've got my beautiful new, I should move these out of the way, Ninja Food Processor, which I'm really excited about. However, um, I, <laughs> I was cleaning it the other day. I'd been warned that the blades are really sharp. And what did I do? Of course, I cut my finger open really badly. So it clearly works very well. Um, but if you ever get one of these, just be really careful because they're very, very sharp. But anyway, let's show you what you're here for, which is all of the stuff in my bird food cupboard 2023. So first up we've got some um, products from Squeaky Beak. I just bought these so I haven't put them into little containers yet. Um, I got three of them. They also very kindly gifted me um, their new blend that's not actually out yet. So I don't know if I'm allowed to show you but keep your eyes peeled on Squeaky Beaks because uh, there's a new one coming soon. So we've got uh, gin and tonic. This has got different kind of lemon pieces in it. Lemon peel um, some type of seaweed as well. I think it's kombu or something. Um, so that smells absolutely amazing. I love that one. Then we've got um, Microbeak's Budgie Smuggler blend. Again, I've mentioned this one before. If you don't know what budgie smugglers are, it's not what you think. Don't look it up, especially if you're a miner. Um, but these are really cool. It's a very small kind of mix for small birds. Uh, lots of yummies in there. No millet in this one, which is good. Um, and it's just a really good staple to have. And then one of our favourites for the flock is the Untidy Mix. You can kind of see there. It has um, popcorn in there, which is a nice little treat for them. It has ginger pieces, like dry ginger, which smells amazing. Uh, but we love everything from Squeaky Beak. Again, we love to support small business. Um, so I always try and get some, and I just made this order recently, which is why uh, I need to go and put them in some pots. Now another brand that we love, we talk about all the time on the channel, is Polly's Natural Parrot Boutique. And I recently didn't order because we need to do a new batch of dry mix soon, so I had to get some bits and pieces. But we also was out of uh, avian tea, so I got some of the Hormone Bliss Hormone Tea. Um, again, if you are uh, struggling with hormones this time of year, it's good to have some kind of teas on hand. This was formulated by our friend Dr. Jason Crean, so you know it's good. Um, and it's all lovely ingredients, so we wanted to stock up on some of that just to have it on hand. And we love to offer tea regularly anyway. And then for the dry mix... Um, two of the products I love to have in are the Simply Floral Forage Tray. I'm amazed I said that because I can never get it out. Uh, love the colour of this one. You've got a lovely rosebuds, uh, calendula, I think there's some chamomile in there. Blue cornflowers, which is one of my favourites. Um, and it's just wonderful to have lots of different flowers. And then I've got this one as well, which is the Blooming Garden. Again, I love this one too. You've got like Corolla Rose, Globe Amaranth flowers, uh, nasturtiums, sweet offer flowers in your bird's diet. Again, we'd love to offer fresh flowers at some point. We might even do a video on getting some of those. So if you'd like to see that, let me know down in the comments. But just look at the colours on these. It's just absolutely stunning. So we just love offering these in our dry mixes and there's loads of ingredients in there. Next up we've got two liquid products, so we've got uh, grapefruit seed extract, GSE, and we also have apple cider vinegar. Now I've done a whole video all about apple cider vinegar and the benefits of it, so make sure you've checked that out on my channel. Uh, always do a search for anything that you're looking for because I've probably got a video in, on it, and if I don't then David probably has a video on it, the parrot teacher. So do check out both channels, but apple cider vinegar is amazing to offer, it's a great staple for our first aid kit, but also for sprouting. Um, again, if you haven't seen my sprouting video, uh, I talk about apple cider vinegar in there. 
Um, so this is fine to use in sprouting, but a lot of people also use the GSE for sprouting because in lab tests, this um, has no microbes in the kind of tested lab results. Apple cider vinegar is still absolutely fine to use, but if you want absolute peace of mind, there's not going to be no microbes in your sprouts, then GSE is the one to use, but it's actually quite hard to find in the UK. I'm kind of running out and it's, um, yeah, I can't actually find it at the moment. So if anyone knows where you can get it from in the UK now, then do let me know. But I like to have both options. And it's totally fine to use the ACV as well. And as I said, it's got lots of other health benefits too. Next up, this is very much a treat mix. We kind of just pick out the seeds for training treats because this mix, which is not so good, it's not something we'd offer all the time, but I buy it in bulk because obviously it's always cheaper to buy um, bags of things in bulk. And then we've got like sunflower seeds, safflower seeds, millet and things like that, that we can pick out and use for training or foraging. For Charlie's training treats, we've got pine nuts and chopped almonds. Pine nuts are his top tier treats. So we get some for going back in the cage and for doing really good work. Um, he likes the chopped almonds as well, he likes sunflower seeds, um, so we've got a good supply here. I do offer these to the other birds as well, but they aren't as keen. So this is a small box of flowers. On the left hand side is chamomile. We're running very low on chamomile, so I'm gonna have to let David know, because uh, he likes to buy it. Uh, chamomile has lovely calming properties, so we always like to have it um, in the food cupboard for the birds. It's good for sort of uh, curbing kind of stress behaviors, potentially hormones as well. Um, you can offer it dry, you can brew it as a tea, you can offer the wet leaves from the tea in your bird's chop. So there's lots of ways that you can use it. And uh, then we've got a hibiscus as well. Um, that makes a beautiful like dark kind of ready purple tea. The birds really like the taste of that because it's a little bit sweet, but a little bit tart as well. I normally also have Tulsi tea, um, but again, I've run out, I'm really bad at this. So I guess I'm gonna have to spend more money on the birds. Um, it's all part of the fun. But yeah, we always like to have a variety of tea blends and flowers in the cupboard. So we've got lots of options for the birds. So here is our sprouting blend. We've got so many different ingredients in here. Um, if you'd like to see like an updated sprouting video or like a DIY kind of sprouting blend video, let me know uh, because we do make our own because then I can kind of decide which ingredients go in there. And yeah, um, it's always really fun to put your own bits and pieces together, which is why I do so many different DIY videos. But there's loads and loads of different ingredients in here. And when you buy things in bulk, even if you have like one or two birds, it just works out cheaper overall. Um, but there's just, yeah, so many yummies in here that we like to sprout for the birds. Um, so we've always got a good supply in. Here we've got um, a box of our DIY dry mix. I did a video on this recently, so make sure you've checked that one out. So we've got like coconut chips and loads of freeze dried vegetables, flowers, loads and loads of yummies and our birds just absolutely love a dry mix so we always make up nice big batches of them and then we have in our pantry we've got like part of it for us and then a lot of it for the birds as well then we've got our diy seed mix which pairs really well with the dry mix again i did a video on this recently so you can see all of the ingredients we put in here it's much healthier than the majority of the ones that you can get store bought so again we like to make our own we can control what goes in there uh, and all of the things that we offer our birds are human grade which means that they are really high quality and if they're safe enough for us to eat then it's good enough for the birds as well so for a couple of spices we have in the cupboard currently, we have star anise, also known as aniseed. Um, this is a very strong smell. Again, this is why we keep the spices separate from the dry mix, because they smell really strong. But the conyers just love picking these up with their little feet and chewing them. And then we've got some cloves as well, a lovely kind of festive scent. And um, the cockatiels really like the cloves. Uh, again, we normally have like Ceylon cinnamon and stuff, but not at the moment, but these two will keep the birds busy just fine. And then we have very much a treat food, which are some Nutri Berries. The birds don't get them very often at all, but we like to have them on hand, especially for Lou and Kip, because they can be sometimes naughty about going back in the cage. Sometimes Kip just gets a bit kind of spooked out the window at night, and then he just doesn't want to go back in for their evening outing. But one of the almost fail-safe ways of getting them back in the cage is a very high value uh, Nutri Berry. So we like to have some in the cupboard just in case. And then for a little special occasion, all of the birds get one too. Then we've got some freeze dried coconut rocks from Polly's Natural Parrot Boutique. The Conyers go absolutely insane for these. They just absolutely love them. I don't know why, I assume they're very sweet. Um, so we like to have a little stock of these in the cupboard. I personally hate everything coconut. I hate the smell, the taste, everything. So, you know, we all have to make sacrifices for our birds. So I always make sure there's lots of different coconut things uh, in the cupboard for them. Then we have some um, tops pellets. Just gonna take that moisture absorber out there. 
Um, as you guys know, we don't really feed pellets as a big part of our bird's diet, but if we are offering pellets as part of a dry mix or anything like that, then we offer tops. Uh, again, really hard to get in the UK at the moment, but you know, the birds aren't that fast. And one of the good things about not having a bird relying on pellets is if they do go out of stock for any reason, um, you don't have to worry about your bird not having any food. Uh, that's why we like to have a nice diverse dry mix where our birds like to eat lots of different things lots of healthy things so we're covering all bases with vitamins and minerals and things like that so you know we're not relying on things and worrying that they're out of stock and not knowing what our birds are going to eat now i really like these these are from polly's natural parrot boutique and these are freeze dried sprouts so again if i've made a mistake and forgotten to soak anything or I haven't got any sprouts on the go. I can use these freeze dried sprouts and the birds really like them as well. They're also handy if you know we're going out for a really long day and I'm, you know, I wanna make sure they're getting all the nutrients they need. They can have some freeze dried sprouts um, and they can enjoy eating them. And they do really like them as well. So these are really cool. Then I've got a little tub of buckwheat as well. This could be fed dry, but we also uh, soak and sprout it. And the cool thing about buckwheat is it only needs to be soaked for 15 minutes. So again, if you're in a pinch, your sprouts have gone weird or you forgot to do them, you can just soak some buckwheat for 15 minutes and serve it. And then it's a really healthy option for some soaking and sprouting things. I do also normally have like a, a soaking blended mix, but again, <laughs> I've run out really bad for this video, um, but it usually has things like buckwheat, quinoa, spelt, lentils, that kind of thing, just for soaking. Then we've got some favorite treat foods for the rest of the flock, apart from Charlie, although he does like these too. We've got hemp seeds in the shells. Uh, all of the birds, including Charlie, love hemp seeds. They're very healthy, have lots of omega-3s in. Uh, we've got some millet. We never normally offer it like this um, on the sprig. We always take the little buds off because then you can portion control your treats. And then we've got sunflower seeds out of the shell. Again, our birds generally prefer uh, sunflower seeds in this way and they're really easy to break up with your fingernails so you can break them into teeny tiny bits to again get more out of your treats and more training from your birds. Now here we've got some chia seeds, these are a great source of protein and calcium as well so they're really great to offer your birds but never feed them dry. Now chia seeds can swell up to 10 times their size when they come into contact with moisture and my personal preference is for that to happen outside of my bird's crop rather than in there. I think it'll be more comfortable. So it's better to sprinkle chia seeds over your chop or sprouts, let them absorb that moisture and then your bird can eat them rather than having them dry and that kind of thing. They're just better off fed with some moisture involved. Then we've got some freeze dried fruit. Again, we like to keep fruit separate as I mentioned in our dry mix video because um, it is higher in natural sugars and we prefer to portion control the fruit so that you know the birds aren't having a huge meal full of fruit and then bouncing off the walls. So we have a little box here and then we can break it up into small bits and then offer them uh, a little piece or two uh, in the dry mix each day. I've then got our coconut oil. Again, I've made a video on this. I'm not sure if I've run out of cards at the top, but I'll try and link everything down in the description. Make sure you watch my video on coconut oil because it is very, very good to offer your birds um, as food. You don't want to be rubbing this all over your bird's body as I've seen other people do. But again, I talk more about why in that video, but definitely worth having it in the cupboard because it is fabulous. Then we've got two lovely red foods. We've got goji berries on the left hand side. Charlie loves these, but to be honest, all of the Konyas love them. They're quite sweet and yummy, but also they're a bit of a superfood. They're packed full of lots of good things. So they're great to offer your bird. Um, just keep an eye on them because when they start to go sticky, it's not really worth offering them anymore. You want them to kind of be dry. That's when you know they're in kind of good condition and worth offering. And then we have on the right hand side, bird's eye chilies. Now parrots don't have the taste receptors for spice, so they can eat all different kinds of chilies and they aren't bothered. Whereas if I was eating them, I would be crying. <laughs> so um, we do like to offer lots of different kinds of chilies to our birds. They do smell really strong, like you can tell that these are spicy ones, but the birds love them, especially with cockatiels. They love the little chili seeds in there um, and they're just really fun to offer as well. And lastly, we have a box of organic nuts. We've got cashews, pecans, almonds, uh, walnuts, and Brazil nuts in here. Oh, and hazelnuts as well. So there's lots of different nuts in here. They are organic and human grade. And again, we don't put these in our dry mix or anything like that because we prefer to soak nuts because when you soak them, they become more bioavailable, easier to digest, and just a little bit yummier as well. Like uh, the cashews go really buttery and yummy. Oh, they're so nice. Um, I don't normally like nuts, so if I like them, and they're definitely worth soaking. So we like to have them portion controlled like this. We can soak them, decide which ones the birds are getting, 
and then we can kind of chop them up once they're soaked and offer them that way as part of the morning meal they can have nuts dry and we have sort of done a little sort of chop mix with different nuts and things so that's okay too but it is better to soak them if you have the option just in cool water usually overnight uh, and then you rinse them and offer them but again I'm thinking of doing a video all about soaking nuts and why it's important so if you'd like to see that again let me know down in the comments so that brings me to the end of the video. I hope you enjoyed seeing all of the tasty snacks that we have for our birds. Let me know if you have some similar snacks to the ones that we have, or if you have ones that we don't have and think that we should get a hold of, do let me know down in the comments. As I've mentioned throughout this video, there's loads of different video links. So if I run out of cards for at the top, there'll be loads of video links in the description. I recommend checking out my nutrition playlist as well, because there's loads of diet information in there as well. But from me and Baby Olive, who is loving that straw still, I hope you're having an amazing day. Take care and see you later.